Hey guys, in this video today we're going to look at typical cloud integration and specifically towards the business works portion of it. And just to give a quick overview of what that actually is, um, essentially with typical cloud integration you can build uh, microservices visually um, and it's, it is essentially saves the amount of time needed to actually build these out and then also be able to run and deploy your projects built into your um, container of choice. And that could be either something that you might be managing privately or something that might be publicly or a hybrid choice. But in this case, we'll be looking at how we can do this within uh, Amazon's infrastructure and platform provided. And we'll actually be using Amazon EKS, so that's their new offering, their new managed Kubernetes service. But we can also do this with something like ECS or um, Fargate um, on the Amazon side. And uh, I suggest maybe we have some videos out there that you can check out as well. And the big point of uh, designing within business works is that everything is done visually. So if you want to code, there are some aspects of it that you can code, but most of it is um, taking some sort of light or some sort of activity within the palette library and just drag and dropping that into the design canvas and then making your uh, integration uh, connections within there. And that's all mapped within the studio itself and then they'll generate in your file and then you can do your deployment onto um, something like EKS or ECS. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into a quick demo. So basically I have something built out already. I'm just going to walk through exactly what I did. Um, but after that, I'll show you how that was actually deployed onto EKS and some of the services that I attached to that. So this is how Business Unit looks like. As you notice, I already have um, a few projects already here. So if you look within the Project Explorer, there's some projects listed. Let me just uh, get these a little closer. So I have account service, uh, customer service. And then there's uh, the dot module and the, the dot parents, and I'll explain a little bit more about what that is. But if you notice that because we're going to be deploying this onto Amazon EKS, we're going to want it as a container. Um, and so that and already listed in, into there. So if you actually want to see what the, like one of the projects looks like, so under um, account service, if I go under the module, under the processes, you'll see several processes. So I have activator. <coughs> And in this case, um, what this does is that this sets up the database that's being used for the project. So um, we'll be storing information within this database. In this case, I'm using a Postgres um, database that's running on Amazon RK RDS. And um, so that's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm setting up here, basically. So if there's already pre-existing information on there, I drop it, then I recreate a table, and then I um, add information to that table that I'll actually be using for my application. And if I want to look at the application itself, basically it's just a query on that database that was created with um, uh, some sort of REST uh, function that uh, we'll be querying and that will actually see the output. And I'll, I'll show you how that looks like um, after. And then for our secondary project, it's uh, customer service. And essentially what this is, is if I open the module, once again we have an activator that sets up um, the databases. And once again I'm using Amazon RDS uh, Postgres uh, database to do that. And then I have um, some things as customer, customer account, and then get customer details. So different things within here um, in the project. And as you see, um, all of these is done within palettes that are, are within activities that are uh, available within the separate palettes. So if I click on them, um, I can see that all the different activities that are available. Um, and so none of this was actually done with any type of coding. It's just a matter of dragging and dropping that onto the uh, platform or onto the design canvas itself. And so once we have that, then um, or once we build our project out, then what we can do is if we want to take advantage of a few other of those uh, cloud native services that are out there. Um, so let's say if I want to use something like Jenkins to deploy my project, um, and then maybe use uh, Maven for my build tool, then what I can do and what uh, Business Works uh, the Studio provides is that uh, there's a open source Maven plugin that you can install. And what that does is it gives you the ability to generate the POM file for application. If you notice here, I have my POM file, and then I have a few uh, properties files. So if I look within uh, the properties file for Kades, and so in this case, because we're using EKS, we'll be using, uh, it's, a, it's a Kubernetes, so we'll, we'll be using this uh, properties file, and this will be used to generate the manifest file um, with uh, Fabric 8. And so if you notice here, um, I have a bunch of different variables and such like that, um, basically the name, the, the port, and uh, maybe the profile that I'll be using. But if you notice, I have a few things like monitoring, Jager sampling, and console server. So these are all things that uh, services I'll be using within my project itself to sort of enhance it. And um, and that'll, that'll all work out and all the connectivity and such. And I'll also deploy those onto EKS as well or um, an EC2 instance. And uh, I'll show that as well. 
So, um, so yeah, so once we build our, our, build our project out, then what we do is um, if we're using something like Haven plugin or something like that, um, then that'll all be done within Jenkins. So if I go here within Jenkins and I go to, let's say, uh, uh, customer service, then um, I should be able to see that I have all of these different stages within uh, my Jenkins project that allows me to view exactly what it's doing. So then check out the code. So I'm using Git, um, making sure that the code is, uh, is, is good. Uh, maybe doing some sort of unit testing that I set up and then also building the year file, pushing this um, into Amazon ECR. So because um, I'm using EKS, um, it makes sense to use Amazon's own repository just because of the functionality and configurability between the two and that it's already, um, already it's, it's the best thing to use if you're using something like Amazon. Uh, keep yourself within the system. And then deploying it onto EKS. So once it's pushed it up, it will actually call upon that new image that you created, and then deploy it on EKS. And then if you want to archive our artifacts, it's something that you really have to do, but something that I like to do um, to make sure that we have maybe these for future usage or something like that. And so if you notice, I was already successful. So if I want to actually check out um, what I have deployed, um, if you see here, I have all these different things. But if you notice, I already have uh, my BW customer, BW account, uh, my Jaeger deployment. So this is one of the services that I'll be using. Uh, monitoring as well, and so um, all this has all this has been deployed onto Amazon EKS. So this is just their version. This is the version that Amazon provides. The managed service is uh, really great to use. Makes it very easy to use any type of Amazon services um, or or anything else they're using within Amazon. So if you're if you're using an EC2 instance already or RDS or ECR or something like that, I highly suggest using EKS because it just makes life a lot easier. And so um, once I have that deployed, then I can already see that um, in this case, because I want it to be an externally exposed project, um, what EKS does automatically is that it'll set up my uh, load balancer for being able to externally hit that on that. And then if you notice, I already have my project support. So I have two projects, account service and um, customer service. So in this case, um, for customer service, I'm just going to put the ID value one, and it should provide me the information within my uh, my database, my Postgres database sitting on RDS. And so essentially this is uh, what the customer database has is the name, email, and the account ID. So what I want to do is if I actually copy this account ID and I go to account and I put that ID, I should be able to see the account type and, and number. And so in this way, this is two different microservices that have been built within uh, business, or, uh, business works and we've deployed them separately, but there is some sort of cross functionality between them in um, exactly what information can be given. And um, that being said, it's not like um, these are hitting the same database, they're hitting separate databases. And the way that it's done is that I'm using a, uh, a third party or I'm using another service called console that is used for key config management and uh, service discovery. And so the key config management, what you do is that essentially you don't want to hard code any values when you're building out your projects because if you need to make a change, that would mean having to go back to design time and make the change. So what you do is that um, you said this, you said basically variables or tokens, and then you said key pairs for those. So that anytime that you need to make a change, it's just a matter of going in within here and saying, okay, um, what is, like if I need to change the user for my database, in this case, instead of TIPCO, I want to change it to something else, then it's just a matter of changing it here, updating it, and then restaging your app. So it makes it a lot easier than actually having to go back and design time. Same thing with service for service discovery. In this case, um, it, it'll tell you if you have some sort of health check that has failed or um, if it's unable to reach a certain service. So it's very helpful. Like, let's say, in this case, it says failing critical. So I can look and see, okay, what's within um, my project that I say, okay, is failing. And, um, and then I'll immediately be able to know and see, okay, this is uh, something I need to check out that um, it's not able to actually access this service specifically. And so, uh, between all of this, then I also have other types of services that I can use. Um, in this case, Jaeger for open tracing. What I can do is that I can view um, exactly, let's say, how much time something took within um, the activities that I built in BusinessWorks. And um, so, like, like here, if I check, or actually, let me check the bigger one. So, in this case, it breaks it up into different activities. So, if I click a certain activity, then it should say, um, let's say, cut customer details. In this case, this will be the get customer details um, activity. And if I want to drill down into that more, then if I go into the smaller one, this one is get customer details. 
then I can actually see how that's broken up more. And in this case, most of that time needed was um, from the database query. So maybe if this performance isn't up to speed, maybe you need to make changes to, let's say, um, if you have your database sitting in a uh, region uh, US East 1, and you want to change that to maybe you have your, or maybe your app is sitting, or your Kubernetes cluster sitting, EKS cluster sitting somewhere else, um, and there's those and there's a delay because of that region hop, then maybe you want to migrate your database into the same region that your EKS cluster is sitting on just to make sure that you have the maximum performance um, within that as well. And so all of this was deployed either on um, within EKS. So like I said, um, I have my monitoring, I have Jaeger and stuff like that, or I am um, using EC2 instance to deploy console. So all of this is encompassed within Amazon. I don't have to go outside of the space. Um, I'm using ECR for the repository. I'm using RDS for any type of database usage I'm using. I'm using um, EC2 instances if I need to run specific um, let's say applications or services. And then I can use EKS as my deployment platform to actually put everything into there, knowing that it's built to be able to communicate with the rest of my Amazon services. So I don't really have to worry about uh, maybe some like uh, let's say some sort of configuration token or some sort of uh, security token that needs to be provided because of the way that it's built and it's very helpful in that sense. So yeah, um, seems the end of that video. Um, hopefully it was helpful to get an idea of exactly um, just build something out within uh, the typical cloud integration with a business works application and then actually taking that project and be able to deploy that onto um, EKS or if you want you can also do EC, ECS or Fargate. So, um, yep, yeah, thank you.